So is the New Testament maybe uh, just a made-up myth? People have got this idea that the Bible has been translated and retranslated and re-retranslated and copied and recopied so many times. We don't know what was actually written way back when. Maybe it's not what we have nowadays. Well, when we, we're going to get into the ancient manuscripts that comprise the New Testament and the Old Testament, and you're going to see that the manuscripts we have are so close to the time that they were actually, that the events actually occurred, that many of the eyewitnesses were still alive both hostile and friendly eyewitnesses. And the hostile eyewitnesses never, ever, ever one time ever said, hey, that didn't happen. The things recorded in the New Testament, they never said, oh, that was a made-up story because, nah, they saw it themselves and there were too many positive eyewitnesses, too many friendly eyewitnesses that said, no, that really did happen. You know that. Come on, all you people around. So there were so many eyewitnesses still, still surviving at the time the manuscripts were written. You can't deny the events recorded. The hostile eyewitnesses would have been thrilled to point out any errors or any additions to the events in the New Testament. They couldn't, so what did they do? They said, let's kill those Christians and shut them up, because they never could deny that it was true. So some people say, well, yeah, but it's just a myth that started small and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. If you look at the sequence of um, the writings of the New Testament, you'll find that one of the first books written was 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is where we see that there were 500 eyewitnesses. So you figure, okay, if mythology is growing, the later one is going to say 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. The other ones don't even mention it. Because it was just accepted as a simple statement of fact. And the Gospels written later just talk about the few people, the, the major players, the apostles, and Mary and the other women. And they don't even make a big deal out of it. It didn't grow. It's not some kind of a growing myth. If it's a myth, it's a shrinking myth rather than a growing myth. That's not the way myths work. So, is the Bible a reliable record of what was written thousands of years ago? A lot of people will tell you, you know, the Bible's been copied and recopied and translated and retranslated so many times. You don't know that what you have is what was written. That's another one of those things where we use that technical term, stupid. You just simply analyze the evidence that we have available to us. If we want to know if an ancient manuscript is reliable, first we have to know when was it written. Second, how much time span is there between the oldest surviving copy to the original copy. And then you have to know well, how many copies do we have and how closely do they agree with each other. If you have one copy of some ancient manuscript, it's not very persuasive. If you got two or three or four, well, that's starting to get a little better. Well, let's compare some of the best preserved ancient books of all times. If you look at the works of Herodotus, which were written in the 400s before Christ, the earliest surviving copy um, is about the year 900, which means it was a time span of 1,300 years between when it was written versus the surviving manuscripts. But we got eight copies, so people say, sure, I'll accept that. You look at Thucydides, the same thing. We have a time span of about 1,300 years, but we have eight manuscripts. Okay, yeah, we'll accept that. A look at the writings of Tacitus, the historian. He wrote in 1100. The earliest copy is to 1100, so there's a thousand-year gap. But we have 20 copies, so people say, yeah, that's acceptable. And then Caesar's Gallic War was written a little before Christ, and the oldest copy is 900 A.D., 950-year span. We have nine or ten copies. Some of them are fragmentary. It's hard to tell, but people accept that because we have nine or ten copies. In Livy's Roman history, we have a time span of about 900 years between the writing and the oldest copy, but we have 20 manuscripts, so people say, sure, we'll accept that. Okay, let's see if there's anything that might be a little better than that. The second best preserved ancient book is the Iliad by Homer. It was completed about 700 B.C., and the oldest complete copy dates about 2,000 years after that, 1300 A.D. So we got a 2,000-year gap. However, um, even though they're 5 percent of the text uncertain, because we have 643 ancient manuscripts, everybody says, sure, that's good enough. Never mind the 5 percent, we won't worry about that. Okay, but what do you think is the best preserved ancient book? Ha ha. Let's see, what does this talk about tonight? Okay, the New Testament was completed by 100 A.D. We have at least one fragment that dates to 125. That's the John Ryland's fragment of the Gospel of John. 
And um, we have complete copies that date only 200 years after the original. Now, this is the year 2010, and if somebody tries to tell you that in the War of 1812, 200 years ago, the British came in with their bombers and they did this and that, the other, would you believe them? No. no, because even though you weren't there, it's only been just about three generations. So you know what happens and you've got a lot of eyewitness accounts that were preserved down through your grandparents and so forth. Um, I know what happened around the Civil War because my great-grandmother passed it on to my grandmother and she told me, you know, stuff like this. So how many manuscripts, how much uncertainty is there? You know, we keep hearing about these discrepancies in the New Testament. Less than one half of one percent, which means about five out of a thousand words are uncertain. That's not a whole lot. And then we had 643 manuscripts of the Iliad. We have got over 24,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. And they agree within one half of one percent. And yet the critics say what? Oh, that's just all made up stuff. That's unreliable. No, this is the best preserved, best attested ancient book in the whole world. There is no question at all about the accuracy of its preservation. And if you wanted to know what it said, of those 24,000 manuscripts, about 8,000 were in Greek. You can take a course in Greek and read them. Or if you want to read the Latin version, which is just a couple hundred years later, you can take a course in Latin and read them. And you find out, yeah, they all agree within one half of one percent. There hasn't been any change in the thing. Those discrepancies, oh no, these terrible discrepancies. You read your Bible and you'll see a little footnote in the margin that says um, that your joy may be full. It says other ancient manuscripts say that our joy may be full. Well, big deal, right? Your joy versus our joy. Originally, the New Testament was written in all capital letters, longhand in Greek. And if you look at the word humais versus the word hemais, there's, you know, kind of similar letters. Somebody could have had sloppy penmanship. Does this change any doctrines in any way? There is not one doctrine of Christianity that depend, depends upon any disputed passage in there. And when people say, oh, we've got thousands of variant readings, what they mean is if I've got 3,000 manuscripts that say your and 3,000 manuscripts that say our, we say we have 6,000 discrepancies. It's one discrepancy. But the deck is kind of stacked, you know. We don't want it to sound like the Bible is really reliable. It is. One half of one percent uncertainty, and there's not one single passage where any doctrine of Christianity is affected. So how about the Old Testament? Well, um, there was no one person or group that decided which books belonged to the canon of Scripture. It was just accepted by consensus over the centuries. And any time there was even one error found, the book was disqualified. Any false prophecy, the book was thrown out, and the, the guy was stoned to death. Except for the book of Esther, we had the entire Bible accepted by the Jewish people by the time of Christ. Jesus and the apostles never, ever, ever one time disagreed with the contents of the scriptures. They disagreed and said, you don't understand it. But they never said, oh no, that doesn't belong in the scripture. They accepted the Jewish scriptures. The only uncertainty was about the book of Esther, which the uncertainty was removed um, about 70 AD, shortly after the destruction of Jerusalem, the Jewish Sanhedrin got permission from Rome to convene one more time and have sort of a theological meeting. And they talked about Esther and they said, yeah, it belongs in there. Wow, big change, right? It had been pretty well accepted, but now it was officially accepted. But all of the other 65 books had been accepted completely all along. Now, of course, you have some other books that are accepted by the Roman Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox called the Apocrypha. They were well known. They had been rejected long before Jesus' time. They weren't even officially added unto, to the canon of Scripture for the Catholics until the 1600s. 1600 years they were not accepted as being in Scripture. You know, some people would say, oh, I think they should be, but the Catholic Church only made it official 400 years ago. The chapter and verse divisions that we have were added approximately in 1225, um, but that's not in the original manuscripts, and it doesn't matter anyway. It's just a helpful tool for us to find things. So is there a problem with any of the manuscripts of the Old Testament? From the time of David onward, David wanted to make sure that the scriptures were copied accurately because he loved the Word of God. 